Welcome to the Dell Wamsley Radio Show. Listen and grow as Dell questions the status quo, encourages you to think differently, and empowers you to make a better life. Get ready as Dell challenges core beliefs, seeks the truth, and reveals the roadmap to the lifestyle you really want. And now your host, multi-millionaire, national award-winning investor, CEO and founder of Lifestyles Unlimited, Del Wamsley. Welcome to Del Wamsley Radio Show, where the hype ends and the help begins. I'm your host, Del Wamsley, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. Today, we're going to dig right into the mailbag. I've got quite a few emails that have hit up. Uh, been hit up on this uh, last couple of days, so I'd like to get into them. The first one uh, starts out like this. It's from Eileen. It says, uh, I've only been a passive investor just since April of 2015 when I made my first passive investment. It sold August of 2017. Since my first deal sold in August of 2017, I've had a total of 27 multifamily syndications sell. I like being a passive investor. So she's owned these syndications, had 27 that she purchased, and then they went ahead and resold for a profit, I assume. Otherwise, you wouldn't probably sell them. Uh, goes on and says, all I do is wire funds, and at tax time, I just hand the K-1s to my CPA. The size of my tax return is measured in inches, and she sent me a picture of it. And honestly, her tax return is about, believe it or not, about 12 inches deep. 10 to 12 inches. It was an amazing picture. So uh, here you go. A lot of success. Syndication's working well. Been at it for a while. Figured it out. Uh, And by the way, she's a member of Lifestyles. And um, she then comes back and asks a question. This is a, I thought this was an interesting question for discussion purposes, okay? She goes on and says, um, Dell, do you know how many multifamily deals you're currently invested in? And do you know how many units you own? I think Grant Cardone says he's invested in almost 7,000 units, and you've been investing a lot longer than Grant Cardone. So um, I've never let myself get up over 1,000 units. I think at one time I might have had 1,300 units or something like that. I've never let myself have more than five or six apartment complexes at any one time. I made this decision for a couple of reasons, and I'll go into them, and I'm not saying they're the right decisions. I said they were the decisions I made for myself. So let's talk about this. Um, Grant Cardone is a syndicator. Now, I've syndicated before, but syndicators can buy as much as they want and continue to buy as much as they want because they uh, don't use their own money. They're using somebody else's money to buy the stuff. So for him to say he's got 7,000 units, as it may seem impressive, Curtis Haynes, one of our investors, has the same thing. It's got that money also, over a billion dollars worth of real estate. So maybe Grant's got even more than Curtis now. I'm not sure. But at one time, Curtis had way more than Grant did. Um, But the point is, is that Grant only owns some small portion of each of these. Now, in Grant's case, he is egregious with his syndications. He takes money up front massive money up front. He takes money in the middle and he takes money in the end. So I'm sure he's getting rich doing what he's doing because he's doing what I never could do and never would do, which was in Lifestyles, I created a syndication forum where there were rules, where people didn't take money up front in the middle and at the end uh, over and over and over again in massive amounts. There were limited amounts. You, If you're going to be a syndicator here, you agree to a limited amount of return. And I remember when I first started doing syndications, and really they were partnerships when I first did them. They weren't syndications, but same same animal. I'd have people come and invest with me. And at the time, the first big deal I ever did was, and <laughs> that's not a big deal, what am I saying? 11 houses was not a big deal. But I had a doctor that was uh, going to do the deal with me. And um, in the beginning, we were going to split the money 50-50, which was, in my mind, what everybody did. You know, I do all the work. I put up the credit. You put up the money, right? But he didn't see it that way. He said, no, I'll give you 25%, and I'll take 75% because without my money, you can't do the deal. I can do the deal without you, 
right? I may have to do work or I may have to hire somebody to manage the place, but you can't do the deal without me. And that made so much sense to me at the time. It really did. And I went on to get another partner. Well, with that partner, I went on and bought a couple fourplexes with him also. Then I went to another partner and we bought 10 units. And then another part, that same partner and I went on and bought uh, another 30 units. So I had 40 with that partner. I had another lady that was a partner and she bought four fourplexes with me, which was 16 units. And then she bought a uh, 18 unit apartment and a nine unit apartment with me. So um, that gave her you know, close to 50 units, I think, something like that, whatever, add them up real quick in your head. And, but I, I had all these different partnerships. Back then, they weren't syndications in that we didn't put out PPMs and we didn't offer them up to people uh, to get into. It was just, hey, you and I want to go do something, boom, we'll go do it. And that's really just a partnership type of a deal. But later on, when we got to 2008 and the marketplace was crashing and nobody was willing to do any deals, I did syndicate. I syndicated, I think it was like uh, a 1,000 units, something like that. And within that 1,000 units, I quadrupled my net worth. And at that point, I was further along than I ever wanted to be. When I made my first million, I was like, okay, now I'm a millionaire. Then I kept making money and I became worth 5 million, then 10 million, then 10 became 20 and 20 became 40, et cetera, et cetera. When I quadrupled my net worth, it was like, phew, I'm already richer than I ever dreamed of being. Now I'm four times richer than that. Do I really need to do any more? And the other thing was, is when I was running these five syndications, along with, by the way, I also owned another 500 units of my own, uh, which was four more apartment complexes. So I owned the syndications and I owned my other stuff that was mine. I had mine and I had ours. It was getting to be a lot of work. Now, here's where the difference lies. Grant Cardone never, from the beginning, ever operated any of his properties. His entire goal was to raise capital and do more deals and then turn it over to management companies and let them manage it. I didn't take that route, right? I took the route of I'm going to manage it because I wanted to make sure there was a great amount of profit that went to my partners who put up the money. It was, a, it was a commitment and a promise from myself to my partners to make them a lot of money. So it was a different road. But that road led me to being busy. Now, remember, I retired at 34 years of age, and then all of a sudden I created a job. I said, well, what do you mean? Well, the bottom line is if you do passive investments like real estate, and you do one, it's no big deal. You do two, it's no big deal. You do five, ten. You know, it it becomes five or ten times next to nothing becomes something. When it it is thousands of units, thousands of units times next to nothing is really something. And I got very busy. I also had lifestyles, which I did, you know, seminars and I was a consultant. So I was busy there. I owned real estate companies where we're selling real estate. And so I had all these different businesses going on at the same time. I owned a mortgage company. And I made the decision that, okay, I'm going to make my life's goal to help other people go do these deals and other people get wealthy like I'm already wealthy. So I could have at one point said, I'm going to do all these deals. Everybody come to me. And that's what Grant Cardone did. You know, he used uh, educational information, advertising and marketing. So you thought you were getting information from him to change what you were going to be successful about. All he really did then was flip you over to getting into his deals. And there's other guys, I've got a couple students right now, that that's what they do. Uh, They've come out of Lifestyles, and they're out there doing information marketing on the radio, same radio stations that I'm on in some cases. And they're bringing people in under the guise that are going to teach you how to do real estate. But the truth of the matter is, when you get there, their seminar is going to say, this is too complicated and too hard for you to do, so get in my deal. There's a lot of deals out there right now where these syndicators just kept syndicating and It gets you in a situation where you have to keep growing to pay your staff, to stay in business, to make the money you want to make, and you end up become a serial syndicator, to which case it's it's a job. It's full-time. It's full-time job. It's a very difficult business to operate, and you have real estate cycles that you have to perform through, whereas... I don't have to perform through any cycles. When we had COVID, I had no problems. When we had the prices go so high that none of the deals made any sense for about 18 months, 
I was able to sit on the sidelines. I shifted, started buying a few grocery stores on the side just for something else to do. But I didn't have to buy. I didn't have to keep syndicating to make my wealth grow, you see. And the other thing you have to understand is if you can only take 20% of the profit, which, by the way, is the max at Lifestyles. You start at five, you go to 10, then you go to 20 on your third deal. But if you only take 20% on a deal, you have to do five times the number of deals. So running five apartment complexes is a lot of work compared to running one. To run three, that means you'd have to run 15. The truth of the matter is there's no way you can possibly care as much as you can care for one. That's why when I bought passively with other people, I always look for somebody in their first deal or second deal because they're still at that, that point where they're in love with what they do. They're not just serially doing it blindly. And so that is why I never went up and grew my portfolio to the size of Grant Cardone's. Um, a lot of those guys that did this out there now, they're not part of Lifestyles, are whacked. Lifestyles has a few of those people. The sad stories where they just serial syndicated themselves right out of business. Um, pfft, sad every time I've seen one of these stories. But out in the outside world, a guy told me the other day, he said, Dell, you got to realize that lifestyles, you have the rules and the protections in place if people follow them. So we have a very small percentage of people that actually got whacked. He said, out in the real world out there where there's no protections, these guys are going down left and right. And they're just losing everything they invested in every deal they did. And so there it is. That's what you have when you don't have protections. And that's why I selected to be small. You know, and small's not, it's relative. I mean, I'm much larger than most people, but I don't need lots and lots and lots of things to do. That's not what I invest for. I invest for cash flow. And everything I do is to maximize my cash flow. All right, next deal. It says, uh, greetings. I've heard your radio program occasionally over the years. Here's my scenario. I have a healthy $500,000 amount of equity in my home that I could use to buy either a duplex or a fourplex in another state. I would buy the property for cash. And a net return of 4 to 6% seems reasonable. Thanks for reading. AJ, bad idea. Don't do it. Absolutely bad idea. Yeah, you're right, though. Real estate that you pay cash for earns between 4 to 6, 6.5%. I've got some stuff that I bought uh, in cash that would earn 7.5%, but that's about as high as it's going to get in this marketplace right now. It's not a good idea to pay cash. The whole secret to real estate is leverage, leverage, leverage. So in this case, the guy's going to earn 4 to 6% on his money and not have enough depreciation to cover that income so that he's going to end up paying taxes on some of that cash flow. As opposed to, I could take that $500,000 and go out and buy him $5 million worth of real estate. And, you know, whether it be $3 million, $4 million, or $5 million, whatever he elects to do, whatever leverage portion he decides to take, you know, the bottom line is it could be up to as much as $5 million. Now you got 10 times the amount of depreciation to cover the income and maybe even cover some of your own personal earned income. You've also got 10 times the cash flow. Because instead of having one deal or two deals, you've now got 10 or 15 deals. And your cash flow is much higher, right? You could have a cash-on-cash cash return of anywhere from 12 to 15%. Way higher than what you're getting by paying cash for the property. So you're losing cash flow-wise. You're losing depreciation-wise. You're paying more taxes because of the depreciation. So your net, 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 net is much, much smaller and really not that much safer. So don't do it. AJ, listen to me. Don't make that decision. Come see me. Let me show you how to do it right so you can get rich while you do it. Not to mention the capital gains on 500 grand could easily be 500 to a million dollars. Take a short break. Be right back. Del Wamsu Radio Show. Teaching you with a roadmap to creating the lifestyle you really want. Keep listening. The Del Wamsley Radio Show returns in moments. Lifestyles Unlimited member Chad on the life-changing rewards of real estate investing. Residents come in thanking you for taking what was dull and drab and turning it around. 
and making their lives better is definitely a blessing. Become a life changer today with Lifestyles Unlimited. Go to GiveMeTotalFreedom.com. GiveMeTotalFreedom.com. Enter code 2024. Join the Financial Freedom Program for just $297 for two years. GiveMeTotalFreedom.com. Code 2024. You're hearing the Dell Wamsley Radio Show. Want more life-changing knowledge? Access our podcast and listen on demand at lifestylesunlimited.com under the radio tab. Now your host, Dell Wamsley. Welcome back to Dell Wamsley Radio Show. Uh, today we're in the email bag and uh, the next email here is from Stuart. And he says, I'm 59. I have money in a 401k that I can get out without any penalty in five months. So what happens is at 59 and a half, uh, the 10% penalty on withdrawing money from your 401k goes away. So he's saying that five months from now, he'll hit that. I can also get it out using a tax attorney, but that will cost me $4,000. What he's talking about there is there's a thing called a quadro, which a tax attorney came up with this way that you can get your 401k out without paying penalty uh, and you might even not have to pay ta- I'm trying to think, yeah, you do have to pay taxes on it, but you don't have to pay the penalty. And the way you do that is that you go into like a separation agreement with your spouse. So you have to be married to be able to do this. And think about it as being a prenuptial where you separate your assets. This part belongs to your, the wife. This part belongs to the husband. And so what you do is you take your 401k and you give it to your wife in this asset separation agreement. And she gives her 401k to you. And so now neither one of you own your own 401ks and you have a legal document. You go to the judge, the judge stamps it. Okay. Yeah, we agree to this. And now you've got a court order saying, give the spouse that 401k. And when they do that, they have to give it to them without penalty because the penalty was for early withdrawal by the person who created the 401k. But that's not what's happening. The court is demanding you give up that money. And so you can get it out. So in this case, this guy can wait five months or he can pay $4,000 and get it done at the same same time, all, you know, right now. I also have 31000 in a deferred compensation plan with the city. The city doesn't participate in this, so I believe I can withdraw it and it may incur a 10% penalty if I don't want wait until I'm 59 and a half. So it's just a, it's a government form of 401k type of a deal. Uh, I really want to get started, but I also don't want to throw away money. And then he goes on to say, I'm a challenge member and I'm ready to get going. Um, so the challenge membership is to buy single family houses. So what I said to him was, is that, look, why do it all at once? The bottom line is, if you do a single family house, if you go out and find one right now, and let's say you buy a $200,000 house, you buy it for 100000 you put 50000 in it to renovate it. Now you own it for 150000 all in you have a $50,000 capital gain, instant equity gain. In doing so, you may have to put anywhere from 10 to $25,000 down. So what I'm telling him is just pull out that 10 or 25,000. Sure, you have to pay a 10% penalty on it, but what does it really matter when you're making, on a $25,000 investment, make 50,000, that's a 200% return, plus the cash flow, whatever that is, two to $500 a month in cash flow. I said, anytime you could find something that you can make that type of return on, pulling it out of the 401k and paying taxes, you owe on it anyway. And really, the only difference being the 10% penalty is worth doing. Now, what if you do one of those this year or two of those this year, and then boom, your five months is up? In fact, one of them might take you five months to do. I don't know. I mean, it's not that it takes five months to do a deal, but it might take all in education wise, getting ready to do it. Uh, finding the deal, doing the due diligence on the deal, financing, closing the deal, renovating the deal, putting your tenant in, all in, it might be five months just to do one deal. And then boom, your problem's over. As opposed to spending the $4,000 to go to the attorney in this particular case. And I know the attorney that does this, a nice guy, but you know, why give him four grand if you can use the money instead to invest? Next one. All right, here's a quick one. Quick one says, can I write off my membership? The answer is yes. And I'm not a CPA, so I can't tell you things that I, that I can't back up as a CPA, but I'll say our members do. 
Uh, 99% of them do. Every once in a while you get somebody who's got a CPA that's a little harsh. But 99% do, and they write it off in a couple different ways. One, if you already own real estate investments, it's an education expense. It's a direct write-off. Boom. I went here to learn how to do what I do better. It's education expense. The second one, if you don't own any real estate, it becomes a part of how I bought the real estate. I had to take this course to learn how to do this, to have these people to help me. And that was, and it gets thrown in as part of the value of the property and gets depreciated. Although in this particular case, I think it's called amortized over that period of time that you own the property type of a deal. So, you know, it does get written off one way or another. Um, business startup costs, I've seen it called, uh, all different kinds of things. But the bottom line is, is that, yeah, you're going to be able to write the membership off. But what's more important is the membership's going to teach you how to write the, the real estate off by writing off the depreciation. Uh, I've got another email that came in, comes from Bruce, says, uh, I was a member for a few years back, but never made steps to buy any rental property. Now, isn't that sad? You got motivated enough to come in, motivated enough to join up, and then then never bought any property. He goes on and explains, he says, uh, regrettably, I spent most of my meager 401k to build a guitar collection. Well, there you have it. Should have bought himself some real estate, made himself financially successful, and then use that financial means to have a guitar collection. I have a guitar collection, but I paid for it after I bought all my real estate. And so it didn't put a dent into my net worth because it was paid for out of cash flow. Now I'm not picking on the guy, I'm just showing you different choices create different outcomes in life. This kind of asset is not liquid. (laughs) I don't bet it is. And I'm still paying tax penalties. So he took 401k money, I guess, paid, took it out and bought guitars with it. You know, I read this one because I wanted uh, people to see life is simply choices. This was a choice. This Somebody sat down and thought this through and said, I care more about a guitar collection than I do about retirement. I got guitar collection. I also have a train collection, which is totally useless in any way, shape or form for any reality in this world. Um, it's just my hobby. I collect trains and I have, I build tracks, I build, you know, layouts to put them on. And then I tear the layouts down and I build new ones go, wow, now that I figured out how to do that one, let's make it even better. And I've been doing that now for 20 years. It's a hobby. I can't play guitar in a band. I'm not good enough, but it's a hobby. I enjoy playing guitar when I pick it up. And if I have a couple of really nice guitars and they sound really good and feel good in my hands and, you know, you can dream about, you know, what if I would have been a rock star? (laughs) Except I can't sing. So uh, that was never going to happen. But again, I'm just making this point. Why wasn't that the second decision? Because there was no care. Now, he goes on and says, even so, I have about 175,000 equity in my home. My optimum course of action is probably to buy some rental homes. I'm not sure where to start, and I certainly can't afford to partner in a large apartment complex uh, purchase. And first of all, that's not true. People getting in these large apartments is uh, passive partners for anywhere from uh, $50,000 and up. Although we do have people that do smaller deals that they they can afford to allow people to get in from ten thousand to twenty five thousand, I've seen it happen over and over again. You just can't do that in a gigantic deal because you can, you've got only so many people you can get in before you run out run out of space, and so you have to get larger amounts from people. But on smaller deals, we have plenty of people doing passive deals with way less than one hundred seventy five thousand dollars. So that statement isn't true. And the point I like to make out here is that people live under assumptions, right? They live under assumptions that keep them from doing things. So he's already ruled out apartments, passive apartments, which might be the perfect thing for him. He goes on and says, as a 275 member, $275 member, by the way, it's 297, I believe, that the special is right now. He must have just saw the special and wrote this. I think it's 297 uh, for two years. It's normally 740 for one year and then 240 per year. After that, they're giving you two years for 297, which is really super cheap. He says, as a member at the 297 membership, can I participate in property tours? Are your property tours strictly limited to multifamily properties? Okay. The answer is twofold. Um, the two seventy, the 297 one gets you the two day seminar, the free, um, the case studies where people come in and explain about their deals. And we do one each month in each city and 
they come in and talk about their deals and you can ask questions and everything. It gets you all the educational package for the FFP uh, program, which is when you come out of the two day seminar, you should be educated enough to be able to go to a realtor and find a deal and buy a deal. But it doesn't include the tours. Now, second part of the question, do you do tours for single family and multifamily? Yes, we do tours in single family and multifamily. So we have a challenge program, which is for single family. We have a multifamily program called uh, the Preferred Investor Group, which gets both single and multifamily. And those have tours, road trips weekly. We go out, we look at houses uh, one day, we go out and look at apartments another day type of a deal. So those include that. They also include consulting. You get your own personal consultant and uh, operations expert. So you get somebody to teach you how to locate, evaluate, negotiate, contract, and buy. You get hundreds of hours of training programs for advanced topics, and you get yourself a mentor to help you do it. You also have consulting on operations. Uh, I like hearing that you have guidelines to protect investors in syndication deals. Yes, we do. It's called the white paper. It's a set of rules that are set up and designed to protect the passives uh, as much as possible from egregious leads. Now, the white paper can protect you in the fact that the the leads don't set up a deal that's egregiously against the passive like Grant Cardone and other open syndicators do, right? However, it can't protect you from stupid. So if there's a lead investor, and that's what we call our certified leads, they're the syndicators that have gone through our training program, they're certified, they know how to do it right. That doesn't mean if they know how to do it right that they might not do it wrong anyway, just because they're arrogant. So that doesn't guarantee, the white paper does not guarantee, it makes it a whole lot safer, but it doesn't guarantee it, right? Also, you've got us looking at these deals, and sometimes they just won't even show them to us, and they go out and do a deal secretly and call people in. But if you ask us, do we know about this deal, and we don't know about the deal, that's a pretty good idea that it's not a very good deal, or they would be showing it to us. And the fact that they're not showing us to the consultants and to the mentors is a pretty good chance that they're doing something that's a little slimy type of a deal. So, yes, there's more protection there. As I don't hear your program daily, I would appreciate an answer by email. Thank you for the prompt consideration and response. Uh, Bruce, this thing was way too complicated to answer all that by email. One of the things I do in my life to keep my life less complicated, folks, is that I don't do emails that often. I do phone calls. I'll call somebody, talk to them. Uh, you come up with additional questions. You don't have to go back and forth with 20 emails. You just get it done. All right. Looks like we're at the end of the time, and uh, we've got a few more emails left, but we'll pick them up another day. For the rest of you out there, remember this. It's not just money. It's an incredible lifestyle. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. The information and opinions you hear on the Del Wamsley Radio Show are those of the host, Del Wamsley, his guests, and his callers. The Del Wamsley Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Del Wamsley Show constitutes an endorsement, recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.